Hey everyone, it's Kyle from Mantic here to bring you the last in the Twilight Kin design diaries. And this time we're going to take a look at some of the heroes, including the big bad legendary Mikhail himself. When looking at the hero options, you obviously want to try to pair, you know, design ideas that go with the units in the army. And that's why those other, you know, videos and other concepts for the units that we had done were so important. But, you know, the heroes themselves kind of have to stand out and they become centerpiece models. They become really important figureheads for what the entire faction is going to look like. And when looking at the Twilight Kin, we had a number of different options to choose from. And one of the ones that was most exciting to me was the Navigator. And the idea behind this was that it was going to be a female essentially who was leading the Corsairs through the void, but they were so practiced at it and so efficient and had been doing it for such a long time that they also were facing corruption. You know, we've said that the females were more resistant, but they, they are ferrying these ships uh, and their crew back and forth over and over again. And so that led to a number of different designs for this sort of ethereal look in the Navigator that had mutations part of it, yes, but uh, was maybe kind of caught between reality and the void itself. So we had these wonderful kind of ghostly sort of concepts for it, and we continued to push certain things. I remember talking to Dave about having, you know, the banner on the back, uh, this sort of flayed flesh look and sort of crawling out of the back and becoming, you know, a, a place that you could put freehand on or, or otherwise. And uh, the various flames and sort of motifs that were there were sort of invoking what something that was stuck in the void for such a long time would start to look like. And this became such a such a prominent unit for me. I, th I think it's probably my favorite unit that we've ever designed uh, for any faction. And it's just a standalone hero for the Twilight Kin. And I, you know, how cool is that, that we have, you know, just a regular hero. And the way that this thing works is essentially, um, it's able to throw out a variety of auras that can supplement play for each of the three different faction types. So it can provide bonuses to Night Stalkers, to Elves, and to the Void Touched. So there's a variety of layering effects that you can go into and get a number of, you know, benefits to having synergy with this unit around. And it was just an important piece. It felt that the fluff fit and it fit game-wise as well. The mastermind behind the Twilight Kin is easily Mikhail. And this is a, a character that's been around for Twilight Kin since first edition King's War. If you've never seen his rules, they were absolutely over the top and ridiculous. He could remove entire models from play on a D6 roll and had a seven plus defense. It was just really ridiculous. And a lot of, you know, fear and intimidation comes from having a character of that kind of prowess. And we know he's been doing certain things behind the scenes that have been pushing the Twilight Kin forward. And, you know, now with their connection to the void, how would he have changed in that time frame? And what sort of ways would he evolve? I remember working on the helmet and, and talking with Dave and trying to understand, you know, if we wanted to have these, you know, flames coming out of the back of the helmet. We, we knew that we wanted to have some kind of visibility to the eyes and that sort of thing, but uh, it became difficult to kind of pull those things off in the scale. This was going to be a bigger, more intimidating miniature and, you know, riding on the Nightmare is, is very important. He had to have the sword and the shield, which were critical elements of his story. Uh, heavily armored, but something that was really, you know, standing out and something that, you know, was easily made to be a centerpiece for players. And so, you know, through the various iterations, the heavy armor and the, the weapon types, that sort of thing, they all stuck through. And I think that we, we got something that is really an honor to this iconic character in Kings of War lore. We sent it around to some of the best painters in the world and we've gotten some wonderful results back. I know you guys have seen some of those, but I'm happy to share some more here. Uh, it's it's an incredible design piece, and I think that it's it's what really defines the Twilight Kin as a faction. Uh, it's it's the perfect combination of the Impalers and the Soulbane, and taking it into his own unique piece. So that wraps up our Twilight Kin design diaries. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this sneak peek behind the curtain to get an idea of what the Mantic Studio does and how we think and approach the different obstacles that we are faced with when designing these sort of things, miniatures and rules and otherwise. And speaking of rules, 
I know that there's a lot of people that are clamoring to get their hands on exactly what all these things do. And I promise that's coming very soon. We're going to be doing a series of rules videos uh, in the coming weeks that are going to show previews for the variety of different factions, uh, any kind of special army rules, that sort of thing. So you have a lot to look forward to, and I promise we're not going to leave you in the dark. So uh, stay tuned. There's a whole bunch more of the rules previews coming. And if you like these, please let us know and we can continue to do them in the future. So thanks for tuning in and uh, pre-order those Twilight Kin. Thanks guys.